Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. So today we're talking all about Hamilton. Ooh. Yeah. It was released on Disney Plus, kind of like end of the summer-ish, August sometime. Yeah, I don't know. It, I, the, it, it all blurs together. 2020 <laughs> definitely blurs together, but it... It released this year. Yeah, that's yeah. Right, yeah. Well, anyway, we went crazy for it. We definitely weren't the only ones, and we've been waiting for like a good time to talk about it. Yeah. And that's this week. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so today we're going to chat about the show, do a little analysis, and of course, picks out some favorites. We could probably, we really like this show. We could probably do like three episodes on it, but we're only going to do one. Wait, wait. So you're saying that we were waiting for a good time to do it. Yeah. So we had to wait for it, wait, wait for, for it. it. <laughs> Well played. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get to that, uh-huh. oh, it's so good. Uh, we always talk about a nerd thing that we're into this week. So, Brandon, I usually ask you to go first. So oh, guess well, what? <laughs> excellent. Well, if you've been listening along along the way, yes. you know that I'm a big gamer yes. and super into World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. And this episode's releasing on Monday, the 23rd of November, mm-hmm. which is also going to be the release of the f- next World of Warcraft expansion. Yes. So I'm going to be playing the heck out of that this week. For the last like day or two, he's actually had an hour like, hey, only this many hours left. <laughs> hey, only this many hours it's left. It's like 24 and a half hours as we're <laughs> recording this right now. Yes. Right. Yes, because of course we record it prior to it being released. So, yeah. That's how that works. That yes. is how that works. Yeah. So, you're uh, very excited about that. And, you know, I'll miss you. Because <laughs> I'm not going to see you for a few days. Bye! <laughs> yeah, so that's that's good. That's fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My nerd thing is I got my very first <gasps> spirit jersey. How weird is it that I owned a spirit jersey before you? Yeah, and I own twice as many spirit jerseys it's true. as you now. I don't know because we uh, we traded. Yeah, we did spirit jersey buying. Yeah, yesterday so we were at a Disney store, <gasps> and I know it was uh, we couldn't decide what to do, so we decided we should just both buy a spirit jersey. <laughs> Which one did you get? I got Mandalorian. Yes. And it's pretty cool. It's shiny. New new Mandalorian that I didn't even know existed. Right. Because I've seen the green one that mm-hmm. they've had for a long time with Baby Yoda on it. Yeah. Um, but this one is like Mandalorian Yeah. And it themed. says Mandalorian on the back. I love the lettering on mm-hmm. the back. It's very shiny like Beskar. Yes. <laughs> And uh, I got a Steamboat Willie one, Aww. and it's like that Sherpa fuzzy. It's very, fu- very fuzzy. Yeah, it's so fluffy, and it just it says Mickey Mouse on the back, and I love Steamboat Willie. And hey, we were, we've talked about it a couple times mm-hmm. on here, um, so that just was a fluke. And, it was yeah. pretty much the most Christy E spirit yeah. <laughs> jersey I've ever seen in Let's my life. Let's take a spirit wow. jersey, put a bunch of Mickey Mouse on it, and then make it fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically Krista. <laughs> yep. So I was very excited about that. And then my other question is, Brandon, what are you drinking today? Well, I'm going to be pretty boring, but... Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> just just a cranberry neutral again. Oh, we've, yeah. we've been there before, but uh, it's, we, it's still fall and yeah. it's delicious. So. Yeah, it's uh, and, and it's easy to drink, mm-hmm. basically. They're mm-hmm. easy. I actually have a neutral too, but I'm going mango. I don't know. It's Ooh. not summertime, but I'm going mango. mango. Yeah, uh, yeah, mango's fun. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it isn't snowing right now, so, you know, in Canada, that's basically summer. Basically summer. It's shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone in shorts and t-shirts yesterday, and yeah, it was, like, I, plus two. I mean, if you look hard enough in Canada... It's true. You can find someone in shorts and t-shirts yeah. so any day of the year. So. I have, uh, a, like, a little off but related story. Um, I've taken students to Finland a couple times, and in Finland, it is also cold. Yeah. 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 But uh, we usually go in... Well, we were going in October... And a student I took one time wore wore shorts and t-shirts, like, all winter and everything like that. And we got off the train when we got there, and the teacher who was was leading the Finnish students started laughing because he said that while all the students were waiting for him, he's like, you guys just wait. There will be a Canadian who gets off the train in shorts and a (laughs) t-shirt. And it was snowing. And then the first kid (laughs) off was the one in shorts and a t-shirt. So we couldn't figure out why they were all laughing. Uh, (laughs) But I was like, way to live up to the stereotype there, kids. (laughs) Excellent. But yeah, shorts and a t-shirt. So, you know, mango. Mango. Mm -hmm. And then last question, a little bit of Mandalorian. Oh, man. So Fridays might be my favorite day right now. I mean, Fridays are always great. That's true, but it's extra great because Mandalorian. Oh, you get a new episode of Mandalorian. Yes. Right. So a bit of a spoiler warning, I think. So what did you think? This was was touted as being a filler episode. Yeah. Well, so 
the, the thing is, they they name drop Ahsoka in yes. the, in the third episode, and so if you haven't watched it, that's a spoiler. That's a little bit of a spoiler, but, but it was uh, all over the internet, so I don't know. Yeah, how too, you, I yeah. mean, too bad. Okay, watch Mandalorian. Maybe maybe we'll we'll put in a spoiler alert. <laughs> edit that in. Sorry, but uh, they had to manage expectations that you're not going to see her in this next right. episode so like we're all like oh well it's a filler and it was uh, it was also directed by carl weathers yes so who plays grief cargo grief cargo mm-hmm. yes of course and all the entire time i'm thinking about his role in arrest development of course where he's like a <laughs> washed up actor <Yeah. laughs> peddling his wares oh that's funny yeah anyway so there's that but uh the episode was fantastic. It was so good. Um, we filler got filler, nothing. We, like <laughs> the, the, there was no, it was not filler. We got yeah. some character development and plot development, uh, plot development, like exposition, and Ooh. like tying into the sequel trilogy and mm-hmm. all this stuff. So yeah, no, this season's been really good. There's only been one bad episode so far. So yeah, and uh, I, I was really, really, really happy with this episode. I knew, well, I mean, even before they said, we knew we weren't going to see Ahsoka because mm-hmm. we saw who was directing. First time directing a Mandalorian episode, by the way. He he handled himself quite well. Yeah. The, it was action-packed. Yep. yep. And uh, the action was well-directed. Yep. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a little bit of everything there, there there was, for there, everyone. There was some cheesy action, I will say that. Yes. But uh, I was laughing at, at Stormtroopers. But, I mean, yeah, that's what Stormtroopers are for. Literally, so, yeah. I think that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dave Filoni is going to be directing the next episode, so we kind of know that that's when we get to see the deep Star Wars. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Dave mm-hmm. Filoni, he's Mr. Star Wars Exactly. Now. Um, and I think he's got enough street cred with with Disney that he can do what Whatever. he likes. <laughs> yeah. Which is great because he loves Star Wars and he he's knows he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Another spoiler I will say about the episode oh, though. Okay. Um if you want to google it T-shirt and jeans man. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I saw that. The, the little bit of a miscue. Oops. You could see a, a background uh, crew member in one of the shots. Like, mm-hmm. I did not see it live. I'm. It was very small. Yeah. But uh, the the joke is that it's actually just, just a reference to Lucasfilm. There was a jeans and t-shirt man in, in the original uh, Indiana Jones. So Perfect. Yeah. That's, I, that's just a deep cut is what just, we're doing yeah, there. It's, just a, it's a really deep <laughs> reference. So there you go. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> I like it. I hadn't heard that. That's funny. Disney A News Update. So today's news item, the big news item, of course, we're primarily concerned with Disneyland and Buena Vista Street. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That was the big one. Um, the downtown Disney opened into Buena Vista Street is how they made that work. A little bit of a loophole. <laughs> like they're having problems in California right now. Yeah, they and... really are. But Disney does it does it right. Yep. Safety precautions and uh, yeah, we've been enjoying watching YouTube clips oh, of our favorite YouTubers. Definitely, I, I was laughing. getting emotional. Yeah, I was laughing when they're like, "I didn't think I'd cry." I was like, really? We knew you would cry. Yeah, like <laughs> I would have made that bet and made a lot of money uh, yeah. because they were they were all very, oh, very teared cool. up and definitely. Yeah, you've seen the the Buena Vista Street, mm-hmm. the suitcase in a dream statue. Oh. And, yep. and all, all the, the cast, cast members, members waving hello and yeah. yeah it was i mean i i totally would have cried being there too so yes you would yes. have yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so of course we were excited to kind of like live vicariously through them yeah. getting to you know eat corn dogs and a mm. churro a disneyland churro a, in park a, a legit a legit churro, churro. Yeah. Yeah. it's the first time um people have been able to step inside the park since march 13th mm. so Inside either park, I mean. So it's March 13th, so it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, that's the big, big news. Um, the other, there's a couple other little pieces. One was uh, D23 did a fantastic world celebration, of course, digitally. Cause, oh. Uh, yeah, because it's 2020. Oh, I, I mean, I thought they were going to pack some people together in a convention yeah, hall. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they had a series of virtual events last week. Um, it went from Monday to Friday. And I think things are still up on YouTube, but I'm not sure how long. They didn't really announce how long they were going to be up there. They might keep them there for a while. or They might. But you can who knows? check yeah, them out. Know. Check out D, uh, D23 Fantastic World Celebration, it's called. And some events are for D23 Gold members, and some are just the free ones. 
And so the free ones are the ones that are obviously up on YouTube. And the, some of them would be like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge storytelling through merchandise, which look cool. They're going to talk about Marvel <laughs> 616. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 616, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, they, well, that just came out on Disney+. Plus exactly. Well, yeah. So there's a talk about that. Um, a focus on Mickey you, and Minnie. So oh. do you know what Marvel 616 is? No, I do not. So Marvel it has kind of like a multiverse thing mm-hmm. going on where they have different different Earths. Um, the main Earth that we exist in where they're oh, superheroes is right. designated 616. 616 so yes. that's where that number comes from. That uh, that makes sense because I did know about like the multiverse and everything yeah, like that, obviously. Yeah. So cool. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm checking out a couple of those and I want to check out more. The, the big news that came to me this week was, I, I must have come out of D23 as well, but uh, they, they were releasing some pictures of, of a finished room of the star yep. wars hotel in florida yep and this this place is gonna cost you <laughs> so much s- money so much money you you might not be able to pay with money you probably mm-hmm. just like souls firstborn yeah maybe your blood oaths maybe your voice right oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh i hear that went well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's probably fine, it's fine. probably it's fine. fine um but yeah th- this looks awesome for a for a star wars nerd like myself and <laughs> I'm definitely singing the song in my head now about it won't cost much. <laughs> Just your voice. Yes, I d- definitely think that we will have to stay at some point in time. Yeah, just we'll have to pinch our pennies and, oh, and get there. I yeah. don't, I don't know. But yeah. it looks awesome. So and totally immersive is always awesome. Mm-hmm. So yeah, very cool. All right, so that brings us to our main topic, which is of course all about Hamilton. <laughs> Disney Plus and chill. All right. So at the top of the show, we said we were talking about Hamilton. Just you wait. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. That was really I, good. I can't sing. <laughs> Sorry. Really good, though. <laughs> so I'm going to be totally honest. This is the least organized we have ever been for an episode so far. But, but we do love Hamilton. We do love Hamilton. So we're very prepared in that we have seen Hamilton a lot. Many Many, many times. Many times. <laughs> so, yeah. But there's all just a whole lot we want to talk about. Okay. And so we're not mm-hmm, super mm-hmm. organized as to how we're going to talk about all of it. Oh. Yeah. So this is going to be fun. Okay. Well, as the teacher, I'm going to let you lead oh, it. Oh, okay. Because you're, you're, I'm organized. You're naturally organized. That's true. I am. Yes. Just because I color code my push pins. <laughs> does not say. That is a true. <laughs> that's true. That's no, true. Yeah. That is true. Okay. So before we start talking about the Hamilton story in uh, like the play itself, the musical. Off the bat, if you haven't seen it, pause this. Watch it. Watch it. It's on Disney Plus. Yes, which is why we're talking about it. Yeah, that that's. I mean, that's why we're talking about yes. it. But it's a famous Tony Award winning mm-hmm. Broadway musical. Exactly. That is available for you to watch on Disney Plus. Which is crazy. Which, yeah. So just watch it. Yeah. I, I mean. So pause this. Go watch it. Then come back. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Okay. Okay. Plus, I mean, this is also about events that happened a long time ago. I mean, yes, fictionalized details, but I don't... Very, very fictionalized. Very fictionalized (laughs) details. But as far as, like, there was this dude named Alexander Hamilton and, like, the main historical points... He did exist, yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of the main historical points are factual, so I don't think spoilers affect... (laughs) No, I mean, come on. (laughs) Okay, so... Quick overview. Basically, you have your original cast performance and recording. Perfect. It was done in what year? uh 2016 yeah 2016 2016 yes they came and while they had the original cast before anyone was replaced they um did this big recording and then they basically held on to it for like four years oh why yeah yeah and then released it this summer they they released it in time for quarantine yeah for us to all enjoy yeah it was during quarantine we were staying home yeah Yeah. (laughs) so you said it was tony award-winning it was it won many many yes it was nominated Stop. Oh, p- stopping. Um, for us uninitiated folks, yes. what the heck is a Tony? A Tony is the equivalent. Okay, you've got the Grammys for like music. Music. And, and you have yeah. the Academy Awards as like the highest Os- for movies. The Oscars. Yes, yeah. the Oscars. Yeah. Um, Tonys are for, like it's for theater. You you missed you missed the Emmys. Oh, and that, the Emmys for that, television. That's for television. <laughs> for the small. Screen. And then and then the Golden Globes is where they all get drunk and they all are just together. Yeah, exactly. It's the same. Um, so the Tonys <laughs> is for theater. You have it's basically broken up into musical and non-musical. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the Tonys. So 
you threw me off here. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That, no, that's okay. Though. I apologize. No, it's all good. Alexander Hamilton is the basis for this whole musical, if you couldn't tell from the title, Hamilton. He was a real person. He was a real person. Mm -hmm. And Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote this play about Hamilton. Because nothing, that's all hip-hop style. Yeah, nothing says rap music like the Founding Fathers <laughs> in 1776. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> wow, we sounded really white there. <laughs> yes, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> um, so, uh, so before I start talking Tony's here... Apparently, after um, so Lin Manuel Miranda got had some success with In the Heights, which was his first yes. like big Tony winning um, musical, and after that success, he was like, "I'm gonna go on vacation," mm -hmm. and he took a he went to I think it was like a bookstore, a library, something like that, and he was like, "I'm gonna take a biography of some historical American person." on vacation with me because I think that's interesting. And he happened to pick up this biography of Alexander Hamilton. And he was reading it and he found out that when Hamilton was 14 and this hurricane came and it destroyed... He Vancouver. said he was 14 when he got a when he got the trading charter. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he said at that point he... Or maybe he was 17 with the hurricane. Anyway, when he was 14, he wrote his first like well-known poem that was like well-known locally. And in it, he said that he wished for a war yeah and manuel miranda read that and was like that is so freaking hip-hop man <laughs> yo <laughs> and so he went home and he googled is there hip-hop and rap music about alexander hamilton no and he was shocked to find out there wasn't no there's and not we're like how are you shocked about this eh. <laughs> but anyway so he's like i'm going to do that Okay. I'm going to create this. Yeah. And so so he did. Good and, on good on you. <laughs> yeah, and sir. Shockingly, when he started doing this, everyone was like, You're crazy <laughs> because let's make a hip hop. Because album. he was crazy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we talked about the uh the fine line between insanity. Yeah, when we were talking Walt. <laughs> Walt Walt. Lin Manuel, George, George Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, there, there, there's there's a, there's a consistent theme totally. there. Yeah, absolutely. So he wrote this musical. He was originally going to do it just as he said it was going to be a mixtape, and he was writing the music for it, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do like mixtape style, and then it became a full musical that like broke records all over the place. It was nominated for a record sixteen nominations. <laughs> In 13 different categories. There's some doubling up there. Yeah, it was a by lot. By my math. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're, that's why you're an accountant. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It won 11 of yeah. those categories. That's pretty good. That, yeah, that's, that's pretty a, crazy. That's a pretty good winning percentage right there. I do have the list here. Okay. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. So the creme de la creme of what you want to win is best musical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won that. Yeah. But shocking, right? Well, I would hope so. It won... Best performance by a leading actor in a musical. Ooh. Leslie Odom Jr. won that for his role as Aaron Burr, who we will talk about. Yes. Yes. Leading actor. That's interesting. Yes. Mm. There I, were might, two... I might mention that later. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. there were two nominees in that category. Uh -huh. Yes. Best performance by a featured actor in a musical. Uh -huh. There were two from this one as Dos. well. Yeah. And one of them won, who was David Diggs for... <sighs> Marquis de Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. We will also talk about. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, best performance by a featured actress in a musical. Okay. Renee Elise Goldsbury won Angelica. for her role as Angelica Schuyler. Oh, yeah. Yes. Lin Manuel Miranda ran a whole lot of them. He won for best book of a musical, best original score written for the theater. Um, the play also won for best costuming, best lighting design, best direction, best choreography, best orchestrations. Best just... It just won. It's just it good. Just won. It's just good stuff. And when it first was going to be on Disney+, Plus, we're like, well, of course we're going to watch this. Oh, yeah. We like musicals. We, I, I like... So, okay. So let's, let's take this back. Okay. As Disney children yep. of the 90s, mm -hmm. it introduced us to musicals as a concept. Totally. And... We didn't get exposed to, like, Broadway because no. we're in the podunks of Canada <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, but we we grew appreciation yes. of, of these musicals. So Yeah, we, we were we hit right perfect Disney renaissance, great Dis musicals. Disney, mm -hmm. Disney brought musicals to children. Yeah. And then as we 
as we grew up, we we picked up these classical musicals like Singing in the Rain. Yeah, great, great one. And Sound of Music. Yeah. And I mean, and like, I always like... loved Grease was always one of my favorite yeah, movies. Grease, exactly. Yeah. So we are perfectly primed for having good Tony Award winning musicals. Yes, totally. And when one came to Disney Plus, we're yeah. like, sign us up. Right, right. We will occasionally do like, we'll go to Broadway across Canada. Um, a local, uh, closer nearby city that we used to live in, um, used to do like a local uh, musical theater once a year yeah. that we used mm-hmm. to go to. So we got mm-hmm. to see, uh, and we both appreciate L- L- live theater. Live theater is is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've seen Book of Mormon. Yes, live. that was really good. You, of course, have actually seen a Disney play on Broadway, which you remind me of all the time. So the joke is, I don't need to go to Broadway yeah, because I've sure. already seen Beauty and the Beast. But on Broadway. I really want to go. Which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then we did go see Broadway across Canada. When they did Beauty and the Beast. When yeah. they did Beauty and the and Beast. And I've seen like Lion King. We, we've actually seen a fair bit of Broadway across Canada. We've seen a lot of editions the, of the, Fiddler. The quote unquote tour version yeah. of Broadway. Yeah. yeah. But it's only a couple hours the, away. The point is we like musicals. Yes, exactly. So we knew we were going to watch Hamilton when it came to Disney+. Plus, But I was honestly worried that I was like, there's all this fanfare around it. Yes. There's I, no way it's going to live up. I thought it I thought it was overhyped. Mm-hmm. Honestly, before we we turned it Me on, too. I I thought it was overhyped and it could never live up to that hype. Oh my goodness, were we wrong? We were so wrong. It is so good. We were wrong and I've never been happier. Right, you don't like being wrong typically. I don't. I don't like being wrong, but this time I was happy (laughs) to be wrong. So the premise behind it is that it is about America then, told by America now. That's what Mm. Miranda said he wanted to write. It is very. It is very applicable to America now. Mm. Mm. Um, So it's told entirely through song. Rap, R and B, and a bit of show regular more show tunes yeah, style things thrown in there. So that that is one thing that really struck me. It is a very it's a huge variety. Yep. Like it's famous for the for the hip hop rap yeah, stuff. But there's some more traditional Broadway yep. show tunes yeah. in it. And it all mixes perfectly together into like this like modern opera. Exa- well, and the choices that are made, both in the writing and the direction, are brilliant as to like what what is going to be hip hop, what is going to be show tunes, what is going to be, um, you know, like more spoken word style. Like it's yeah, it's so clever. And as a fan of writing, I am very impressed by those kind of elements. Mm-hmm. I'm very impressed by the illusions. I'm very impressed by the motif. Also just the general theme of like the power of writing because Hamilton's whole thing was he just uses his writing ability to keep moving forward in life. He's he's writing like he's running out uh, of time. Yeah, he took a pencil and connected it to his brain. Oh. <laughs> So I'm going to do like quick synopsis and I, I kind of want you to interrupt me and we're going to chat as we go through the synopsis. Okay. Okay. Good. I will, I'm good at interrupting. I know. I know. This is why I figured this would go well. All, All right. right. All right. So ready. I'm going to break. Let's talk act one first. That's a good place to start. So we open with a song about Alexander Hamilton. Oh, <laughs> what, what's that song called? <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. Oh, <laughs> good. Good title. Yeah. Good title. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically we get some exposition. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, any good song has a little little bit of exposition in it. Yeah. So Hamilton has a hard early life, and through his brains, he makes his way to New York, where he meets Aaron Burr, John Lawrence, Hercules Mulligan, Marquis de Lafayette, and he joins the American Revolution. Now, with very with drinking, with drinking, that's important. Yes, but what's very cool before we get to the drinking part? Oh. Yeah. Is who's our narrator? Well, so I'm going to argue here. That Aaron Burr is actually the, like, despite it being the title character, being Alexander Hamilton. I'm going to argue about that, too. Aaron Burr is your main character. Okay. Period. Aaron Burr might be the main character. Who did you say the title character was? Well, th- there's one title. Okay, no. Well, what's the play? What's, what's the, the play t- called? Hamilton. I believe there are two characters named Hamilton who are pretty significant uh, in the story. I guess so. Uh, with... And in fact, I feel like that is a significant choice if the whole premise That is fair. Is... What's important is who tells okay. your story. That was that was my male privilege speaking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, it might be about Alexander Hamilton, but we will get to Eliza in 
a couple songs. <laughs> a couple, a couple songs. So like, we start like with four, yeah, five. Exactly. Songs. We yeah. start with Alexander Hamilton, but it is narrated by Aaron Burr. And who is Aaron Burr? He's uh, he's the guy that shot Hamilton yeah. that he spoils in the very first song. Yeah. Was, what the heck? He's the damn fool who shot him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Spoiler alert, at least. <laughs> I feel like that's in a lot of history books, though. Yeah, I, but, like, I read those. Well. No. Uh, no yeah. And he was also vice president. Aaron he wa- Burr was. He was, yes. And can I just say how ridiculously awesome it is to get who you would assume would be the antagonist of this story, if it's actually about Alexander Hamilton, which we can argue about, mm-hmm. um, being the narrator? No, oh, yeah, it's a fantastic narrative choice. Oh, it's so good. The other thing that we're not going to talk about every single song, but one thing that we get in the exposition song, which is Alexander Hamilton, mm-hmm. is some of the choices that come back later. So in this play, like I said, David Diggs won for both Lafayette and Jefferson. Well, he's so they, they have a lot of do, do, exactly. uh, dual characters because um, a large number of them. They said that Hamilton's life was kind of split into two. Mm-hmm. So they had some important people in his life in the first half and some important people in his life in the second half. Right. They kind of connected these two in the play. Yes. And had pe- people play them. Yeah. The two parts together. Right. Yeah. So a lot of the people who are most significant to him t- took on dual roles. Mm-hmm. One of the things that they do in Alexander Hamilton in the in the, the song is they have a couple lines that was like, um, me, I loved him, me, I died for him, all those different things. Yes. And they're played, the casting of the double roles is done in such a way that it, it works for both meanings. So exactly, you have, exactly. And this is why yeah. I'm like in love with this play is because of the really clever writing it's, for this. It's well thought out. So yeah. the actor who plays Marquis de Lafayette and who plays Thomas Jefferson mm-hmm. is the same. And the actor who plays um, Hercules Mulligan and James Madison is the same. Mm-hmm. And one of their lines is, we fought with him because they fought beside him mm-hmm. as it, during the revolution as Mulligan and Lafayette. But then they in Act ag- 2, they fought him. against him, which Whoa. still means fighting with him. <laughs> exactly. It is so clever. And it's just like this one little word where you're just like, whoa, that's cool. That's just that's just English that's for just, you. Yeah, exactly. And, so anyway, I really and, like that. And then Philip. Yes, who um, plays both. Well, Philip is um, Hamilton's son, his son, oldest son. Yes. Who, again, spoiler, but he dies in Act oh. 2. <gasps> and John Lawrence. Yes. Who was same, his closest friend. Same actor. Is played by the same and, actor. And, they, and he dies. He died for him. Yep. In that In song. his ideals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says, and I died for him. And, and they yeah, both died. They yeah. both did. Yeah. yeah. So it was really good. So anyway, there's a lot of these clever moments throughout mm-hmm. the whole play. And Hamilton said it took him almost a year just to write that one song. Yeah. Which is fair. Yeah. Because it's yeah. Cool, quite a heavy yeah, song. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so he gets... He, so we're not going to talk about every song in this no, much detail, no. but just that's what we start with. And it's this insane number to start with. So he makes his way to America. He meets these guys. He joins the revolution. He does it over drinking. Drinking is <laughs> d- drinking is how the revolution comes. That's basically it. Basically. That's, is, that's, that's the premise that I'm know, going there. Let's have another round <laughs> tonight. tonight. <laughs> so he becomes George Washington's right-hand man mm. in an effort to get ahead and not throw away his shot. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see what you did there. Nice. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Seat shot has many mm-hmm. meanings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But this whole time, he wants to fight because he still thinks this is how he's going to get ahead, get a name well, for himself. He's a he's a poor immigrant. How else are you going to get he's ahead? He's 19 at the time. I mean, thankfully, we've come beyond oh, that. Like, yes. poor immigrants, mm-hmm. they don't have to go to war mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to get ahead mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway... <laughs> Um, he longs to fight because he thinks this is how he's going to get ahead, but instead he gets ahead because of his brain, essentially. Yeah. Then, shortly after that, he meets the Skylar sisters. Ooh. He meets... That's how you really... Angelica, Eliza... And and Peggy! (laughs) Oh, I love Peggy. Yeah, isn't she great? Yeah. Yeah. She's she's a scene stealer and a half. She is. She is. That that might be a speaker warning. Oh, whoops. (laughs) I, 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 sorry, I get into Peggy a yeah, little bit too much. Yeah, we literally yell at Peggy when it gets to that point yeah. in the play. <laughs> and <Yep>. Peggy. 
And, oh, yeah, so... He, I threw you off you there, You did, Sorry. but I was trying to think of how much I want to... Okay, so, basically, Hamilton meets the Schuyler sisters, who are very interested in the events of the revolution. They say it's so exciting to be alive right now. I think after a while, you get tired of living through a major historical event. I I can speak from experience. Yeah. As living through a major historical event known as 2020 yes. yeah it's not <laughs> yeah it's, it's not super fun yeah it it's not amazing to be alive right now no, i know I they would, were wrong they were wrong <laughs> like maybe it was amazing to be alive back then no, no i don't think it was every time they play this i'm like you're a woman and yeah the, the time is not great yeah but we meet the Schuyler sisters. Yeah. Hamilton marries Eliza, who is the second oldest, yeah. the middle daughter. Mm-hmm. But there is a connection with Angelica. And in fact, real life, Hamilton and Angelica exchange letters and they remain close throughout his whole life. So there's a little bit of conjecture there that the play gets to mess around with a little bit about th- that not they, necessarily there was a romance between them, they but that's definite some connection. They take dramatic license yeah, they do. with that, just like everything else. Totally. So... He marries Eliza, um, and the basic premise that we're starting there is there's a big contrast between Aaron Burr and Hamilton. Yes. Burr is much more cautious and calculated. Which there's nothing wrong with. Well, he sings a song called Wait For It. Yeah. And I mean... every time I'm like, maybe this dude was just ahead of the time in politics. Yeah, he's he's a poli- he's he's a true to the bone politician. Before that was a thing. Before that was a thing. Like they they go on to how he invented campaigning. Yeah. Mhm. Like that's that's something that Honestly, we just take for draining. <laughs> that, that that we take for granted yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Like we have these horrible attack ads on TV and stuff yeah. like that. They didn't do that back then. No. They like the second runner up to the presidency was the vice president right and could you imagine that now oh my goodness uh let's yeah. let's pretend like that would be terrible right now <laughs> but can, can you imagine could you imagine yeah, it would be very different oh so that's basically the premise behind it is because you have aaron burr as narrator who's very cautious and he, he says he wants to wait to see which way the wind blows right. is one of the lines things like that Where, and he keeps saying he wants to wait for it right. whereas burr i'm oh, um, sorry whereas, whereas hamilton, hamilton yeah. is like this is what i want to he's do he's a go-getter yeah, type of personality and because of that he has a swift rise in he, like he's got a success he, he's got a he's got much success and also some temper and mm-hmm. he doesn't think things through maybe right. all the way exactly yeah. so very very, very contra- um, much contrast there. The revolution goes on after Hamilton helps John Lawrence in a duel against Charles Lee. Um, he is then suspended. Washington suspends him and sends him home where he finds out Eliza is pregnant. Later, and that's with Philip, who we talked about. Philip. Yep. And later Lafayette convinces George Washington to bring Hamilton back for the Battle of Yorktown. And he does that in the song Guns and Ships. <laughs> Which we'll, is we'll, we'll ta- we'll super talk. impressive. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And very fast. <laughs> <laughs> after the victory at Yorktown, um, and then after the son, after Hamilton's son, Philip is born, Angelica moves with her husband to London. Hamilton finds out his close friend John Lawrence is killed in a seemingly pointless battle. And in response to that, he throws himself into his work even more. And then he's named the Secretary of the Treasury. Ah. And that brings us to the Tre- close of Act One. Treasury or State? Treasury or State. Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> In, we have a couple secondary characters established as being extremely close to Hamilton and the play, well, plays with it a bit in one sense and not the other. So there's been conjecture um, through his letters and things like that that Hamilton had a close connection with Angelica, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, his sister-in-law, and a close connection with John Lawrence. Yeah. But the problem is we're reading that through, well, now 2020, but it was at the time when the play first came out, 2016 lenses, where you're like, it's removed from context. So no one really knows. We do know that John Lawrence was his first close friend. And I mean, he was an orphan, Hamilton grew up an orphan and everything like that. So he formed this very close connection with John Lawrence. And after his death, it was quite devastating to him. And the play does show that after that, he just throws himself into his work. Right, which is, I mean, that's a common thing in, yeah, in people's lives. Sense. Yeah, totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that brings us to the intermission. Oh, finally. Well, I know, because we both are of the opinion that after the Battle of Yorktown, it feels like there should be an intermission there. Yeah, they're, like, if you've watched Broadway plays 
and that that song ends it, feel, it feels like an intermission mm-hmm. and then they have a couple more songs after yeah. that it's kind of like this limbo period but that's fine and i i get that they were trying to divide it more in terms of hamilton's he, life his when there life was like a yeah. Pause. yeah i get that but you have this big climactic moment with battle of yorktown and then actually when that happens they're all like standing on chairs and they're all like fists in the air they're, they're pumping their chests yeah, and we won, hercules we won, we won. We won. Yeah. yeah and then it stopped and the crescendo of the music and it it all just stops, and the first time we watched it, I looked at um, Brandon, and I said, well, there's the intermission. Oh, no, wait, no, no it's not. Yeah, I, I really had to pee, and I was really excited, and, and then, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, not so much. Yeah. Okay, so, but now we actually have the intermission. Right, yes. After nonstop, okay. and it's another good moment. Mm-hmm. We get that we have a little pause here where we're moving into yeah. the second half it's of a, Hamilton's it's a life. It's a time jump, which exactly. is a natural Totally. Intermission spot as well. So. so, Act 2 opens where we get Thomas Jefferson coming home. He's coming <laughs> home. home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he wants to know what he missed. <laughs> yeah. He missed so, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, he basically I mean, missed the late 80s. Yeah. He says. <laughs> I mean, this is historically inaccurate as well because Tom well, Thomas Jefferson was involved in more than the play lets on. Yeah, I mean, he was the ambassador to France, and he comes back from that, and he is made Secretary of State. He starts out with cabinet battle number one, Mm -hmm. arguing immediately with Hamilton about the financial proposals. Then we have, at the same time, Eliza and her family, including Angelica, who's visiting from London, travel upstate for the summer, but Hamilton is very focused on his career to go with them. So instead, he decides to stay back because he's dealing with his financial situation and now he's got Jefferson to contend with as well. Work- workaholism is bad. Especially because he okay. meets Miss Mariah Reynolds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he, so he meets her, he begins an affair with her, and then her husband blackmails him. Hmm. Yep. So basically it's like, you're going to give me money or I'm going to tell your wife that you're sleeping with my wife. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of left there. And basically every time I watch it, I'm like, dude, go upstate with your wife. Oh, no, wait, you're not going to do it again. No. No. Yeah. Make better choices. Make better choices. Yeah. <sighs> so anyway, Hamilton, just, Jefferson. It's, it's just workaholism is bad. It's true. Look yeah. what it led to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Hamilton, Jefferson, and Madison reach a compromise regarding his financial plan regarding state debts in exchange for the location of the capital. Oh, is that the room where it happens? <laughs> that is the room where it happens. Oh. And Burr is now envious of Hamilton's sway and power in the room where it happens, right. which is an awesome song. Right, yeah. And mm-hmm. in Act 1, you have him doing Wait For It, and now he's got the room where it happens, so you have kind of this see, conflict. See, the, the problem is if you wait for it, then things just happen without you. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Which Hamilton says <laughs> in the room where it happens. He says you get nothing if you wait for it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You wait for, that, wait that, for it. That's a... <laughs> That's a great callback, it is. is what they would call that. All yes. the callbacks throughout this play are insane. Mm-hmm. All right. So now Burr has shifted, being like, ooh, okay. Hamilton convinces Washington to remain neutral in the France versus British conflict. In response, Jefferson, Madison, and Burr join forces to try and find a way to discredit Hamilton. Washington then resigns. John Adams is the new president. <laughs> ooh, the John Adams administration. <laughs> Good <Welcome>. luck. <laughs> Jefferson, Madison... Okay, so that doesn't start well for Hamilton. Jefferson, Madison, and Burr confront Hamilton because they believe uh, about James Reynolds' blackmail, thinking he was embezzling. He says he believed he was doing some speculation. Hamilton confesses instead to his affair and decides to make it public. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that... Could you imagine nowadays someone writing an essay about how they had an affair? A torrid affair. Like... We, we had we had a president impeached mm-hmm. over an affair not that long ago we've had a president get elected amid some accusations and some many accusations many many accusations yes. and like on sol- tape solid proof on yeah. tape of sexual assault and harassment yeah that that yeah yep I was trying. I was trying to be generous, but that was there's, being generous. There's, there, there's no generosity. Yeah, there, that's as you. generous as I got. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, can you imagine? Like Hamilton decides though. He's like, woo! I'm gonna tell everybody about how I did this lady. <laughs> I don't think he said it quite like that. Oh. <laughs> but basically, his idea was. 
he was worried that other people like would, that it was going to come out yeah and he's like i'm he's, gonna get ahead of this and he's do gonna get ahead of it he's he's trying to be his own pr manager yeah it doesn't go well though no because uh, apparently like historically he writes this pamphlet and like this basically confession about this affair and he showed it to his friends and they're like this is crazy he says i think i should publish this and they're like don't do that everyone will like this won't win you any favors right now it's just their word about speculation which is like whatever yeah so anyway Mm. he does it it basically really wrecks his marriage and his political career and his political career yeah it basically damages it and eliza then tries to erase herself from history in a song called burn which is very cleverly written. Ha, burn. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so she wants to erase herself. She says she's going to erase herself from the narrative. And so in a play that's all about, like, who tells your story, and Hamilton's very concerned with his legacy, mm. it's a pretty big deal that she wants to erase herself from the narrative, is mm-hmm. what she says. Mm-hmm. So time passes, and Philip, Hamilton's oldest son, is now graduating from college. He decides to defend his father in a duel with George Eker. Ecker? Pew, pew, pew. You're making Star Wars pewing oh, sounds. <laughs> that's not what he does? <laughs> no, they don't have those the oh. guns. They have. No, this is blasters. Maybe, maybe he would do better. If maybe he, he would if he, if he was against a stormtrooper. Yeah, um, if he was against a stormtrooper, he would have been, been fine. Because he dies. Yeah, he yeah. dies. Yeah. He's fatally shot. Um, his death eventually helps heal the rift between Eliza and Hamilton because they're kind of like in mourning together. Well, they don't talk about how Hamilton told him to shoot in the sky. Yeah. Uh, ooh. And what, what's, what's tough about that one is Hamilton was like, his premise behind that is your mother cannot handle a heartbreak yeah. with this idea that then he <laughs> He will also end the duel, and you don't want to have to live with another man's there was life a, on your conscience. There was a lot of assumptions there. Yeah, there yeah. were. Two, yeah. So anyway, yes, his assumptions do not really come true. Mm. Um, it does end up healing the rift between Eliza and Hamilton, which just because they're basically it, well, it says they're living through the unimaginable. Yeah, and it's they're it's doing that together. It's quiet uptown, and everybody cries. Oh yeah, and including then they're, Madison. They're happy again. Well, I don't know about happy, but they're healing. They're healing. Yes. Yeah. So after that, they um, well, they want to get back to politics. Yeah. Please, please. <laughs> I mean, I'm a I'm a hard fella, but that oh, that, that it's makes quiet me uptown. it makes oh, me man. sniffle every time. Oh man. man, I cannot get through. I'm talking like ugly balling kind of thing. Of course. Well, yes, yes, but, but yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, mm-hmm. So Hamilton then endorses Jefferson in the election of 1800 against Aaron Burr. So Burr is doing quite well, and it's actually a tie where it's up to the delegates, and Hamilton has the deciding vote. Now, this is a big deal because he and Jefferson are always butting heads. They've been basically enemies their entire political career, and Burr's been kind of like his sort of friend, but they also don't see eye to eye on things. So when Hamilton endorses Jefferson, he says basically Burr is going to say whatever it takes to get him elected. He doesn't have ideals or beliefs, whereas Jefferson does, even if I don't agree with them. So this makes Burr seriously ticked off. Mm. And in a series of letters, Burr challenges Hamilton to a duel. So they go to New Jersey to duel because... Everything's everything's legal legal in in Jersey. Jersey. (laughs) And Burr shoots Hamilton between the ribs. And Hamilton reflects as... So they kind of do this like slow motion bullet moving. And Hamilton reflects on his life. And then he decides he's going to throw I, away I, his I, shot. I, I like to feel like it's his life flashing before his yes. eyes kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's deciding what to do. And throughout this whole thing, it's like he doesn't want to throw away his shot because of his legacy. But then he ends up aiming his pistol to the sky in he's the throwing, play. Literally and he throw, literally throws away his throws, shot. Throws away his shot. Too. Hamilton mm-hmm. dies. Mm-hmm. He's dead. The play then closes as the cast reflects on history and memory, and it has this refrain again of who lives, who dies, who tells your story, this question of legacy, where we get the power of Eliza coming through, because Eliza is the one who tells his story. Right. And the story of others. And this is where your argument yes. of who yes. the title character of Hamilton mm-hmm. actually is. Well, so well, uh, it may be Eliza Hamilton. There is a reason that it wasn't called Alexander Hamilton, even though the title song is Alexander Hamilton. Mm. It is just called Hamilton because as important as Alexander Hamilton's life is, no one would have cared one little iota if Eliza Hamilton hadn't come along to tell his story. Exactly. And that's the refrain that gets said again and again and again. Um, Washington says it when he says... Um, like who lives, who dies, who tells your story. And then that's the chorus that's repeated at the end. And they all literally say, Eliza, she comes forward and talks about how the legacy, which was so freaking important to Alexander Hamilton this whole time, it, wa- it really was, only yeah. exists because 
she maintained that legacy. She wrote herself back in the narrative. She told the stories of people who fought with and against mm -hmm. Hamilton, mm -hmm. raised funds for the funds for the Washington Monument. It talks about the orphanage she established. And then to really cap all my argument here about how Eliza Hamilton is as important, if not maybe more so, because she's, she's the one telling she, the story. She's a pretty cool lady, yeah. At the very, very end, she's the one who's alone center stage. Mm. Right? Hamilton literally is walking up with her, and then he leads her, and he pushes her forward, and he steps back. Okay, okay. And then she does that gasp. And then she does the gasp. I want to ask you what you think about the gasp. Okay, well, the, the gasp has been interpreted in many ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is she realizing that she's dead? Yep. Is it, it her seeing him again? Is she? Is it her seeing him yep. again and then realizing she's dead, or or what? What do you What do you think? I think it is actually because he she sees him first of all, and she smiles, and he leads her forward, and kind of motions her like pushes her forward a little bit, and then steps back, and she looks out and does this gasp, and I think it is her seeing the legacy that oh, she created. Okay, so my my thoughts are she's looking she's she's dead and yep. she's oh she's, she's dead at this point she, yeah. yeah she's looking down and she's seeing 2020 <laughs> and she's like oh my god ah! i was almost i almost spit out my drink <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think it is um maybe maybe not i don't know I, maybe not like i think she smiled a little too much for that <laughs> She's like, do you know that people in Canada don't have hockey now? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. A anyway, that's that's how that ends. And uh, I've I've ruined Krista. Um, so you let's... couldn't see he was waving his arms as he was doing the scream. It was fantastic. Okay, okay. I'm, let's I'm... let's take it back. Okay, um, I'm regaining my composure. <laughs> we'll take it back to Hamilton overall. Okay, okay. Who? is your favorite character of all of Hamilton. No. We've only done a few episodes of this, but anyone who's listened, I'm pretty sure can tell, I have a really hard time picking favorites. <laughs> yes, she has a hard time choosing really anything. Like din it's true. dinner or... Nope, can't do it. What movie we're going to watch. Yeah. Anything. It's true. In fact, when um, we were getting married, we, were, we did a destination wedding, and the travel agent um, had met me first, and then when she met you, she was like, man, I very rarely deal with a bride who knows exactly what she wants and makes decisions so easily. <laughs> and that's exactly what you did. <laughs> he just started laughing. <laughs> He's like, I haven't met that person. <laughs> no. But no, I have a really hard time picking favorites or making any type of decision. So can I say, and Peggy? And Peggy! Okay, not actually my favorite, no. though. I'm yeah. gonna... She's fantastic. But yeah. I'm actually... Oh, it's so torn because there's so many fantastic characters. But I'm gonna go, um... King George. Ah, oh, dang it! No, you are not saying that! <laughs> you told me before you had a different... Like... Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna pick King George because his first song where he comes out... The first time we watched it, I literally cried. I was laughing so hard. And it is brilliantly done. Um, his, like, the way he portrays his insanity, because George went nuts. He was known as the Mad King. Mad King. No, but, not the one who burns everyone. But before but. before Game of Thrones, yes. King George was the original Mad yes. King. And he didn't set, like, communities on fire, as far as we know. As far as we know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, as far as we know. Yeah. As far as we know. And he does that really well. I mean, I really love the way he just, like, picks someone and stares at them the whole time. Mm. He has minimal movement, especially in the first song, other than his shoulders moving. So in the cast recording, it's different than the play recording that's on Disney+. Plus. In the cast recording, when he's calling out his backup ones, he goes, like, everybody, kind of like that, like which is very Broadway-y. Mm -hmm. But in the play, he does it kind of, like, very deadpan, like, everybody, which is just fantastic because he's like i'm king and now jump when i say yeah he's like he's mad at everyone for missing their cue <laughs> exactly. basically yeah but i love like the cold insane eyes where he just picks someone and stares at him the song is incredibly written because it's done as like almost like a breakup song it's a yeah it's a yeah. it's a like a taylor swift right it's like it's hardcore like breakup song okay um, yeah and yeah, the other yeah. thing that i like about him is it's the first time you see more show toony style things yes then the, there's been there's the been hard there's rap. there's been some hardcore exactly. hip-hop and rap and all that and also the costuming in this play the basic premise was they were going to have traditional um period appropriate period piece appropriate um, costumes from the neck down and their hair or like the upper like their heads were going to be like well in this case it was 2016 
appropriately modern times like except the, except George. king george yes like i mean the biggest the biggest example of this is of course hercules mulligan with his little beanie and stuff <laughs> and mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's he comes kind of out full, full yeah. wrapping, right? Yeah. But in like the colonial garb. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. But. Um, it, but George, King George, really stands out as being separate, which helps. Well, like, this is the new world. This is the old world. It helps that he introduces it as his play. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy my play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, okay. This is your king. <laughs> well, this is difficult. Because that was going to be my choice. You were not <laughs> for favorite character. You told me once that your favorite character was someone else. No. Yes, you did. You told me your favorite character. I had this all worked out in my <laughs> head. This is what happens when we don't discuss in advance. Uh, okay. I thought you were gonna say Lafayette. No, I. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. So. You tell me why you I'm. I'm gonna go off my script and peggy and peggy <laughs> no also not and peggy but i do like and peggy right my favorite character then would probably be george washington <gasps> interesting yes okay he, he carries through the whole play which, he does he's which, one of the ones that doesn't swap which is interesting for mm-hmm. this play like they have lots of swapping and all that mm-hmm. but he's the father figure mm-hmm for the whole play and he's alive and also dead at the end he he has a very imposing presence mm-hmm. as as this father figure yep and yeah i i just i really like george oh, washington yeah. no he did he did great and he got gets that moment at the mm. end of right teach him how to say goodbye which is just like uh, goosebumps mm, and yeah here comes the general oh my gosh it's such a good song yeah i i liked it the first time i heard it but i think the second time i watched yeah. it i was like this song is every, insane every time i watch hamilton yeah i appreciate george washington more and more yeah and you know what that's that's a sign of an excellent character mm-hmm. yeah good choice and that you have at the end the advice that he gives Hamilton is who lives, who dies, who tells your story. At the end, that's repeated, which, again, shows how important that advice was to um, Hamilton's life. But you also get, when Eliza talks about raising funds for the Washington Monument, mm. right? If you watch it, watch Washington's face behind Ooh. her. That is clever. Yes. That is clever directing right acting well, right there. Well, yes, because, I mean, people who have dissected it, she talks about ending slavery mm-hmm. and... Washington shows his shame because Washington yeah. never ended slavery. Yeah, he owned slaves. He, he owned slaves. Yeah. He was fully in support of slaves. Yep. And that that's that's just an interesting commentary from, from 2016 when yeah. the play was made. Yeah, and there's a few different pieces throughout there. I mean, when it was put on Disney+, Plus, it was, of course, during a lot of racial tensions in mm-hmm, the States. Mm-hmm. And so that came to the foreground again that it didn't do enough to address those things. Lin-Manuel Miranda said that um, he agreed. He wished he could have done more, but he was trying to stay true to the time period as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a pretty delicate line to walk, and neither you nor I can um, say too much about that. Well, yes. That being said, that when one of the cool moments is Washington looks ashamed and he does this, like, nod because he he has this moment of, like, looking up and, like, she tells my story. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, Because exactly. it's held directly against, mm-hmm. I spoke out against slavery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and she even says, like, you could have done much more. Yeah. Which so, they probably could have. Totally. So I it's mean, yeah. Washington also gets that moment there. So very cool character. Mm-hmm. Interesting choice. Yeah, I like that. Since I went first for favorite mm-hmm. character, I'm going to ask you. Favorite song. <laughs> well, this this was like impossible to pick. Because right? it's it's just chock-a-block full mm-hmm. of fantastic songs. Yeah. Like more than almost any musical. It's true. That I've listened to, you you just got hit after hit after hit after yep. hit. And even the ones that you might not love, you're just like, this is such an amazing song. Yeah, well, it's so like, well written. As an as as a hip hop opera, <laughs> they're all they're all integral to right. the story. Exactly. So it is tough to choose. Mm-hmm. But like you said, my favorite character might be Lafayette or Burr. I thought you might go Burr. Nah, yeah, Burr. Burr's cool. Yeah. As as Burr is, but uh, no, my favorite song is going to be Guns and Ships. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Because it's so fast and it's so fun and it hits it's you amazing. and it's 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 just yeah. you like you literally need to listen to a YouTube tutorial <laughs> to try and sing along with it. Yeah, it's. I may I or may may not have done that. <laughs> I, I know all the words, but I can't do it as fast. Oh, it's it's such it's yeah. so good. Or I could just throw them all together and not make any. Yeah, sense just, pretend, <laughs> just pretend. Just <laughs> pretend. Yeah, it's it's impressive. It is very impressive. Yeah, good choice. Yeah, yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Plus, like, he's a very cool character and the way he does it. Well, I mean, it, so do yourself a favor and look up the Marquis de Lafayette's Wiki- actual Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. He led a very interesting life. Yeah, he really did. He's just, yeah, awesome. Cool dude. Yeah. All right. Um, my favorite, so again, so many good Yeah, ones. it is tough and to choose. And part of the reason I choose. actually went with King George as my favorite is because one of my favorite songs is the first one, is You'll Be Back. Yeah, so that, that, so, so I was like, I, I can't pick that song. I was choosing between <laughs> favorite song and favorite character, mm. and I tried to... To switch them yep. and you i i you went t- first and i messed you up you turned that on its head so i uh, uh, okay yeah. so my favorite song uh is probably satisfied okay i like come on obviously but that, that so has many good ones i almost went like my shot right? yeah, like, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. but satisfied is amazing and every time i watch it i literally get goosebumps i'm so overwhelmed and it's an amazing song on its own, but if you watch it mm-hmm. right after Helpless, which I also love, like, that's insane how... The choreography reversed and all that Yeah, stuff. also do yourself yeah. a favor while you're on YouTube looking up how to do Guns and Ships. Watch when they put Helpless and Satisfied in split screen side by side mm-hmm. and the choreography matches, it's, like, basically it's perfect. It's all in the choreography. So the basic premise in Satisfied is when Angelica talks about how she was first attracted to Hamilton but then decides to make a calculating choice, kind of, you know, to get ahead and not throw away her shot because she has... Mm. It also has this idea of this is the role of... Uh, like as a, as a woman I'm appreciating this this is the role of women at the time she she's, says her only job is to marry rich because she's the New York city She's <laughs> because she's the oldest and the wittiest and the gossip in New York City is insidious mm. <laughs> not that I've listened to that song a lot <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and she's such a fantastic character and such a fantastic talent that song just like overwhelms me every single time I love it it's fantastic mm. love it yeah, so that if I have to choose, if I have to choose, is my favorite. That should have been your choice. I, I, okay, so I was right. It's basically my yeah. choice. Like, don't... <laughs> okay. You weren't right in your favorite character. Oh, but... who did you think I was going to say was my favorite character? I don't know. Because I'm right. just not King George. Because that's who, you that's to who say. I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you, know, you can't have the same favorite character. No. Well, okay. I love King George. He's, right. he's a great character. Okay. So my other thing is, we talked about favorite character. We talked about favorite song. I want to talk about another random character. Okay. I want to talk about Death. Oh! Yes. Because Death is a character in this play. She sure is. Yes, she and, is. And she, she's a she. Yep. If, you don't, if you're not paying attention. Right? Yeah. But they have a... One of the um, ensemble is actually credited as being Death. Mm-hmm. And if you watch, she shows up at moments either immediately preceding or during someone's death. Well, I mean, the first time you see her fully highlighted is right after King George's big song and he executes her, basically. Yeah, yeah. He orders her executed. Yes. And then... She reads a pamphlet about the revolution. And she's from then on kind of like enabling death or yeah we see her in the opening but it's just kind of like in the background you yeah. don't see her too much for that um when uh, alexander um hamilton's mother dies we see her and well, she's probably she's probably metaphorical death then too Who yeah knows? but anyway we we don't we're not focused on her <laughs> no um she plays the bullet uh, a couple times once when yes. it misses Alexander Hamilton's head during the song Stay Alive and then it is the actual bullet at the end that kills him. Mm-hmm. We see different things like she shakes hands with John Lawrence immediately before he dies. He, he, he flirts with her, literally. Yes, and then also again, Philip literally flirts with death mm. when he is on his way to go challenge yes. to a duel. Exactly. He literally flirts with her. Mm. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then dies. Mm. And so we see her again and again and this role of death. And I just think that is such a clever, clever character yeah, choice. That's and really cool. That. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Do you have any other little moments 
or character shout well, I'm surprised you didn't talk about book guy, to oh, be honest well, with you. Well, uh, so when we were talking about favorite characters, I was like, can I pick book guy? Because <laughs> <laughs> the, in the Skylar Sisters song, yeah. the, they're going uptown and looking for a guy at work. Mm. You have... Um, you can't, you can't see me. You can't me. see him. He's dancing. I'm dancing, dancing like right book guy. So anyone who's seen this will be like, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's the same ensemble cast member who plays um, Philip Schuyler, the Eliza and Angelica and Peggy's father. And then the same one who does the doctor after Philip is shot. He is book guy and he does this great dance with a book when they're looking for glasses. a mind at work. He's and got he's wearing glasses. glasses. Yeah, 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 it's fantastic. Yeah. So I really like book guy. And you really like minor speaking of an ensemble S- character, sassy letter lady. During um, she's in a she's an ensemble character yeah. as well. She's yeah. you can see her in the background a lot. But my favorite part, including her, which is also your favorite part, including her, is during when when Burr is challenging Hamilton to a duel. A dot Burr. A dot Burr. Yes. Your your humble servant. Yes, which yeah. is what that's called. Um, mm. um, your, to be obedient your obedient servant. servant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's when Hamilton says he's going to have here's thirty years of <laughs> disagreements. And and she's got two letters. <laughs> and and, ha, and ha, 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 ha. yes. And she does it like a little ballet. She's thing very she's to present the very sassy. Super sassy. I also enjoy well, I mean, like I said, I enjoy a book guy. But in part of that same song, Skylar Sisters, when Burr meets Angelica. And she says, Burr, you disgust me, Asa. <laughs> You've disgust me. And then I'm a trust so, fund baby. Some alternative alternative facts going on there. <laughs> yes. You've disgust me. Yeah. Okay. But again, I like the writing. It's I like that. fantastic writing. Fantastic mm-hmm. play. Go watch it. Mm-hmm. If you didn't listen to our instructions at the beginning. Go watch it now. In fact, if you did, if you paused and you went and watched it, and then you came back and listened, you probably want to go watch it again. You probably just, just watch it again. I yeah. mean, it, it When in get, doubt, watch Hamilton. It gets better every time. A hundred percent. And then listen to the cast recording. Yeah. Yeah. So so really good. We could talk a lot more about a lot of we the different prob- details here. Probably shouldn't. But though. we probably shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. That brings us to the close of our main segment and moving on to trivia. Oh, okay. So this is where I get to make fun of you yeah. for last week's trivia. Right. Okay. Last week, I asked you three questions. Mm-hmm. And the first question was, what popular junk food was invented in Disneyland? Mm-hmm. And you said... It was Doritos. Tor- tortilla chips. You weren't very confident, Mm -hmm. but you were correct. Yay! It was Doritos. Which is awesome. Yeah, so they had the Mexican restaurant uh, in... Well, it's now Frontierland. It's Frontierland. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. They had the, they had this whole tor- tortillas. They had tortillas, and then they would go bad, and they didn't know how to use. Like right. they w- they were gonna throw them away. They had stale tortillas. They turned them into Doritos. Yeah. And uh, that's how we have tasty Doritos to this day. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty weird. Yeah. The Doritos is... were invented in Disneyland. Yeah, by by stale food. <laughs> Doritos are just stale food, yep, but 100%. I mean, they're tasty, so whatever. Okay, so question two. Uh-huh. What is one food, quote unquote, item that you cannot buy in Disneyland? I was so confused on You that. were so confused, but you guessed. What on earth? I have no idea. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you didn't guess anything. <laughs> But the correct answer <laughs> I, is yeah. chewing gum. Yeah, no it, way. That, I was that's get that why right. I said quote unquote. It's not yes. tec- you don't technically eat it. I wouldn't want to swallow it because then it would stick in your stomach for seven years. Yeah, no. that's what oh, I was that's an urban myth as yeah, well. Yeah, well, um, still. Yes, yeah, still. Yeah, you can't buy that because they didn't want people spitting it on the ground and making right. a mess. Right. You can you can obviously bring it in yourself. The they poor don't. cast members had enough of a mess to clean up. Yeah, they didn't want anybody buying it on property. <laughs> so, yeah. you were wrong right, there. Sorry. Right, 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 right. The final question, I gave you a multiple choice yes. answer. Also not confident on, about that. No. How many churros are sold churros. in Disneyland each year in a non-pandemic, normal type right. year? And you said... You know what? I'm going. I'm going top of the tier. I'm going 8.5 million. And... Sorry, that, <laughs> that is that's way that's way too many. No, 
I mean, I could probably eat that many churros if I was everybody on on property. Right? But, but, but not everybody likes churros because they're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. No. So the correct answer is 2.8 million. This is according to Anaheim Tourism website. Right. So, I mean, it might be a little higher now. I don't know. Yeah. But, but according to that. But according to that, I it's, was still it's, wrong. it's 2.8 million. So, yeah. so that, I was very wrong. That's the correct answer. Well, you know what? It's my turn now. Uh-oh. At one for three with those hard questions is not bad. Those were fair questions. One of them was good. <laughs> All right. So I had to rack my brain because I like keeping my questions on theme, as I think you do too, when possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know lots about Hamilton. Well, well, you know lots about history. Yeah. And even though it's American history and not Canadian history, you also have a really good memory. So I couldn't really ask you much about that. Uh oh. So instead, I decided to ask you more about the musical in general. Uh oh. Okay. So I have three questions for you. Uh oh. Seems to be our normal lately. Yeah. Okay. Question number one is going to be probably the easiest one. That means I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> so Lin Manuel Miranda in, in the original cast plays Alexander Hamilton. He does, yeah. Maybe, arguably, the title character. Arguably. He was really torn, though, because he also wanted to play a different character. Who was he also considering playing? Um, Aaron Burr? Okay. I don't know. Uh, he's the other. Ma- he's the other main character. Mm-hmm. If I'm writing mm-hmm. myself a musical, <laughs> I'm going to be the main character. Maybe, maybe George Washington also, but right. I don't know. Okay, all right. So... Question number one, your answer is Aaron Burr. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. 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 So. I, I punched the Burr, sir. Oh, <laughs> it's a blur, sir. Sir. <laughs> so, question. We have watched that musical way too much. Not near enough. You <laughs> pronounce not near enough incorrectly. Okay, question number two. How long did it take Lin-Manuel Miranda to write My Shot? Um. Just that song. Just that song. Uh, uh, 18 months. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Last question. That's, that's a random question, but okay. (laughs) I had heard that a few times before, so I was like, oh, that's a good question to ask, Brandon. Okay. Question number three. I don't know if you're going to know this one or not. No, I'm not. (laughs) But we just watched it, so maybe you will. Okay, dude. Okay. There is some, there, there are some points in the middle of songs where there are speaking parts. However, there is only one considered one speaking scene that isn't like rapped or anything sung or anything like that one spoken scene in the whole play not like a spoken line in the middle of a song but one spoken scene what is that scene um when philip dies he they're kind of speaking then i guess i don't know that's kind of weird yeah, only one spoken scene. Okay. All right, yeah. You don't sound very confident. No, I'm not. <laughs> if you think you know the answers, though, feel free to contact us on social media or through our website and uh, tell us what you think those answers are. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You, you might. You might know. Okay, or rather, but... maybe the listeners will know. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a little Yeah, bit. that's probably. I mean, not to spoil anything, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe the listeners know. So that's our show for today. Thanks to El Mule, who's responsible for our awesome custom theme song that you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website at disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. You can also find us on social media, Instagram at disneya.podcast, on Facebook at disneya, and Twitter at podcast. Why don't we have all the same things? I, because they were taken. Oh, okay. Apparently there's lots of people who say, hey, I'm going to call my my page Disney A, and then they post one thing, and then not again for three years, but well, they still claim the stupid name. Get out of here, exactly. people who take Disney A, because we're, <laughs> Dis- we're, we're Disney, Disney A. a. Exactly. So we would love to hear from you. For example, your guesses to our trivia. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible trivia. <laughs> you just say that when I ask. Yeah. You can also find Disney A episodes on your favorite streaming platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, all, all of them. Many podcasts. Many podcasts. Many podcasts. Please review our podcast and subscribe. And if you know someone who might like this podcast, be sure to recommend Disney A to them. We're trying to expand our reach and that would help us out a lot. Join us every Monday, including next week. Uh, uh, all the news. Mondays. Yeah. All we're we're going to be there every Monday. Exactly. We actually We're going to some... talk about Mandalorian. Yeah, and news. Uh, and then we're going to we're going to talk about WandaVision in January. In January. But before Ooh. that, we have some seasonal stuff coming up for December. 
Yeah, Christmas theme stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So join us and hear what we're going to talk about. I'm actually pretty excited for the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. So until the next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney A. Hey.